There is a huge issue in the fitness industry right now, and it is women like me that contribute to it. Let me explain. About 50% of the DMs I get are from mothers who are extremely dissatisfied with the appearance of their stomachs. The women's fitness industry tells ladies to strive to have a flat stomach, to have a snatched waist, and for your stretched skin from pregnancies to completely disappear. This way, every time you look in the mirror or you catch a glimpse of a photo of yourself, you will adore what you see. The worldly message is to be self-obsessed with your own image and that if you can manipulate and contort and control, then your body will fit into this concept of ideal image that you want to look like and it is only then that you will feel this ethereal freedom because you have achieved your perfect body. Most of us, myself included, are especially vulnerable to this message when our body has changed without our permission. The Christian woman needs to have an entirely different perspective about her body image. God gave you your body for a simple reason, to bring glory to him. But Ash, how do I bring glory to him? By focusing less on your own self image and focusing more on the one who created you. This means that when you look in the mirror and you see that forehead line that didn't used to be there, you see saggy under eyes for the five hours sleep that you got last night because you were serving your babies and maybe this has been going on for months or for years, when you catch a glimpse of your stretched out skin hanging when you're in the prone or the side plank position, when you see yourself in the mirror and it is visible that some of your internal organs have been jammed around a little bit due to pregnancies and when you notice that your bra isn't quite fitting like it used to because your breasts have a little less oomph from all of the breastfeeding that you have done you should stop shrug and say wow wow god thank you so much for this body that has allowed me to serve my family so well. That is what a healthy body image is to God. It is respectable to exercise with deliberate programming to be honoring of your limited time as a mother, whether you are pregnant, postpartum, five years postpartum, perimenopause, or postmenopause. It is wise for you as a mother to address your diastasis recti ab gap like a pro and the tone and functionality of your pelvic floor. This way, you aren't being plagued by back pain, and so that incontinence isn't the reason you find yourself shaking your head no when your children ask you to please play tag with them on the playground, or mommy, please jump on the trampoline with me. Just like healthy foods, God has given us natural movements that best help heal the postpartum body through specific exercises and progressions. It would be irresponsible of us to not use these natural exercises to help us restore the integrity and strength of our bodies as mom. I also want to acknowledge in the fitness industry that on this one spectrum, you are told to get a flat stomach and on the other end of the spectrum, we are seeing images of a 300 pound woman modeling underwear labeled health at every size. This is simply not true. In fact, it's like giving grown women a pacifier saying there are no inherent risks such as heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and likely an earlier death with increased risk and potential to have problems on your way, which by the way, would be financed by government, TRICARE or Medicaid, or by the private insurance provider that you pay into. Neither of these are good goals to strive after. Of course, there are some legit exceptions to women who are more drawn to this camp that make it exceptionally difficult or even sometimes impossible to lose excess weight 
because of a hormonal imbalance like polycystic ovarian syndrome or Cushing's or hypothyroidism. Sometimes it can be linked to antidepressants or sometimes even the birth control pill. So I know that there are exceptions out there, but if you're in one of these categories or something similar, it doesn't give you permission to put on the cloak of victim mentality saying that, oh, because I have this, there is absolutely nothing I can do to improve my health. Therefore, I'm just going to quit caring or act like it's not an issue at all. It is good stewardship of your body to work towards healthy fat loss if you are well above your body's ideal healthy weight range. The real problem and what I'm hearing from an increasing number of women who have already gotten to the point where they're fairly lean, they exercise consistently, and the mindset is almost body dysmorphic, where they look in the mirror and you can even see visible oblique definition lines sometimes, yet because their stomach protrudes just a little bit down at the bottom or it's a little bit thicker than it used to be at the top, they think that other more fit women walk around with this elusive flat as a tree abs all the time. When in reality, it takes good lighting, a little bit of sucking in, a little bit of tightening and posing in order for any mother to have the appearance of flat abs at maybe just a couple days during the month. The reasons why your stomach isn't as flat as this table is because you have visceral fat. This is the deep fat that protects your organs. Now specifically consider your uterus. Women have visceral fat to protect our reproductive organs. And then we also have subcutaneous fat. This is the fat that you can grab and it will jiggle. We all have it, especially in the postpartum season. This type of fat can also protect our reproductive organs and it also helps keep us warm Women tend to just be colder than men in general, and this helps us regulate our body temperature. If you are menstruating, you are going to see visible changes in the flatness or lack thereof of your stomach on a monthly basis. On your period, generally days one through five, you're going to have bloating for the first two days. And then for the rest of your follicular phase, days one to 14, typically, this is when you're going to feel more energetic and productive and focused. And then right around ovulation, typically day 14, remember this is when your cervical fluids are long and slippery like egg whites. This is the time when you wanna be active if you are trying to conceive. This is typically when you feel like you look your hottest and you feel like your stomach looks the flattest. And then as you move into the luteal phase, which is typically days 15 to 20, you're gonna experience symptoms like bloating or constipation, a tendency to want to binge eat a little bit more or be more attractive to filling up on carbohydrates, which is in turn going to give your stomach a fuller appearance for that portion of the month before you get your period. If you're in perimenopause, it gets even harder to have a flat stomach as a mother because your reproductive hormones are sometimes overproducing, other times they're underproducing. And over the long span, if you were to look at a graph, they're generally trending downward. And when you have changes in your estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and your hormones are decreasing, it's going to trigger metabolic changes for the worse. So metabolism, a little bit less active. And then when you pair this with your daily total energy expenditure, which is what you do around the house. So when you have toddlers, you're always picking up their toys, you're getting on the floor to change a baby's diaper. You're very active, hands-on, holding babies, rocking babies, when you have very small children at home. So when you don't have as many really little tiny children at home, your energy expenditure throughout the day may have decreased a little bit. So even though you may think, I'm eating the same as I always have or healthier, and then you look at the factors of your hormones are lower, your PMS symptoms are stronger, and your metabolism has changed, paired with a decreased caloric energy demand, 
then you just don't need as many calories as you used to need to stay at your body's current weight. So when you consume too much for how much your body needs, then you're going to gain fat. And women tend to gain fat first in the stomach, the butt, and the thighs. If you are postmenopausal, your reproductive hormones are at constantly lower levels. And when you're producing less testosterone and less HDH, human growth hormone, it's significantly more difficult not to add body fat. And this is why it is so important to build muscle so that you can have strong bones and a higher metabolism and a healthy, more flexible, active, youthful, performing body throughout all seasons of motherhood. Listen up, because I say this in love. When you exercise and you nourish your body, but you complain in your mind or you put your complaints into words about how big your stomach looks, how saggy your breasts are, how thick your waist is, and how you hate the cellulite on your thighs. And you say these things to your husband or your best friend or your sister. You aren't complaining to yourself and to them. You are criticizing the ultimate artist, the creator who made you, the potter who formed you perfectly and wonderfully made. And you're saying, hey, I can't be content with the way you made me. I know better than you and you messed up. That's what we're speaking to the Lord. So I urge you from this day forward, make a decision. Number one, prayerfully repent. If you've been in a cyclical bad habit that maybe you didn't even acknowledge till now about demeaning your body and therefore demeaning the one who created you, repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Help me put away my pride. Help me put away covetousness in comparison of this other woman or covetousness of how I used to look. Repent and ask for forgiveness and bring your need to the Lord. Ask him to help you. Never again complain, at least verbally, to anyone in your life about anything regarding how your body looks aesthetically. It is a waste of your breath, a waste of your words. It is not honoring to God. And you don't need to be spending so much brain space being worried about your aesthetics when you're doing everything possible to take care of yourself. And instead, you should be worshiping and giving gratitude to the perfect father who made you perfectly and wonderfully made. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with a friend who would be encouraged. I love when my friends share videos with me or just let me know that they're thinking of me. And this is a way that you can pour into a friend that's completely for free. She can take it or leave it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I feel like I could talk about body image so much more, but I hope that this is helpful for you. If I missed something major or if there was an exception that I didn't highlight, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to hearing from you.